Hello, uh, I'm Juan Uribe, uh, Estate Vineyard Manager for Columbia Crest Winery. And I'm Todd Chapman, the viticulturist up here at uh, Columbia Crest State Winery. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what, what we do at Columbia Crest to make a great wine. So uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, this area, this AVA area here at, uh, in the Patterson Vineyards, Horse Heaven Hills. Uh, we have about 20, a little over 2,100 acres here at this vineyard location. And uh, uh, we, uh, different kind of varieties out here uh, that we grow, you know, Merlots, Grenaches, uh, uh, Rieslings, Cab Sauvs, you know, and, um, and we're closely uh, right by the Columbia River, so we get our, our irrigation water from, from that source. So it makes it uh, easier for us to manage you know the canopy growth and the also the uh, the uh, uh, berry sizes. So at any time, if there if you feel you, uh, if anybody has a question, feel free to jump in and ask us a question, and we'll try to answer the best we can. Yeah, a little bit more about uh, Horse Heaven Hills, just as an AVA overall. Uh, it's tucked in between the Yakima Valley and the Columbia River. Um, I think we're up to close to fifteen thousand acres in the AVA. It's one of the fastest growing AVAs. Um, we, I'm trying to think of, I think 25% of the, the fruit that comes out of the state of Washington uh, is sourced from this AVA. So it's, uh, it's a large area and it's growing fast because, uh, you know, because of the climate, it's suitable for wine grapes. Um, elevations range from 300 feet to 1,800 feet. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a good place to grow now that we have a, a water source, you know, available with the Columbia River. Um, today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about Sauvignon Blanc, which is kind of uh, an up and coming varietal. It seems to be, it seems to have gotten really popular here, especially in the last two or three years. And, uh, and we want to show you some of our, some of our Sauvignon Blanc fruit here in the vineyard. So this is uh, Sauv Blanc, um, the and canopy style here is a sprawl, so it's a little bit different than what you would see with most red, red varietals when you're talking about uh, a vertical shoot positioning system. This sprawls the whole year, we do not pick up uh, a wire for fruit exposure. What we're trying to get here is, is shade or dappled sunlight um, throughout the growing season. It helps maintain acidity for for the winemaking team. And these and this uh, vineyard, uh, this area right here is planted in '79, so it's over 30 years old. Uh, it keeps producing, you know, uh, great grapes that our winemakers uh, like to chew, uh, pick from. So, uh, yeah. anything else you want to add? You want to pick some grapes or? Yeah. So this stuff is actually getting uh, pretty close to harvesting. What we're doing this time of year. Um, is we're out in the vineyards, we're making sure the fruit looks clean. Um, this is a pretty typical size for a Sauvignon Blanc cluster. Um, and what we're doing is we're kind of scouting for the winemaking team, um, giving them an idea of when things are getting close. So a lot of times we're just popping fruit in our mouth. What we're tasting for is um, sugar, acidity. Look at the seeds. We're looking at seeds here. You can see that's got a nice brown kind of cocoa color. Um, once that seed starts to turn brown and get real crunchy, you know that, uh, that the fruit's getting close. Um, so we're out here tasting um, and we're starting to sample. Actually, this week is the first week that we've uh, we started pulling some Sauvignon Blanc samples. Um, we and what had, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and we started, uh, we have some, uh, some of the Sauv Blanc came in at 20 bricks, so it's looking like maybe, possibly next week, we may be picking something uh, in this area. If not, it'll be the following week after that. What are bricks? Br oh, go ahead. Bricks are, uh, you know, soluble solids, sugar. It's, it's the sweetness of the fruit. Um, so what we're, what we're sampling for is sugar and acidity basically ph and ta um, and what we do is is we have a team that goes out and we'll be sampling you know once the season really gets going we'll be sampling uh, each block twice a week 
uh, to give winemaking kind of baseline numbers. We have, you know, we have so many blocks that we're trying to visit in a, in a timely fashion that it's hard for winemaking. So this gives them a little bit of a, a map to let them know what needs to be tasted. Um, and, and when it needs to be tasted. So, so, they, so they'll see 20 bricks or 21 bricks like Juan was talking about and they know that they need to get out to that block and taste. And winemaking's tasting, you know, the, the numbers give them an idea but they're really tasting for certain flavor, flavor profiles. So like Sau Blanc, you're, um, like I spoke about, you're getting shade so you, you want nice bright acidity. Um, you want tropical, uh, tropical flavors, stone fruit. Depending on what style of Sau Blanc, there are a few different styles. Some of it is more, more ripe, more into that tropical um, scheme. Some of it is picked, you know, we do some New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc, right. where yeah. uh, we're picking at lower sugars, higher acidity, uh, and that will go into stainless steel ferments, you know, and, and it's a different style. So it depends on what winemaking is looking for exactly. Um, when we come out and taste, right. but but sampling gives right. us an idea. And ultimately, it's the winemaker's decision. They come out here. Sometimes the bricks are there, but they they uh, still waiting for the TA and the pH and all that. So and they come out like Todd was saying. Once uh, once in a while, they come out, venture out into the vineyards, and Todd's usually with them because uh, Todd's our viticulturist, and uh, he's driving around with them, and they do a little tasting at different blocks in this whole vineyard location. Um, and then they send us the information, we do the schedules, and we get rolling, start picking. Yeah, and when we're picking, um, you know, especially for Sauvignon Blanc's a really thin skin varietal, so we want to pick, we're usually picking the middle of the night or, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning right. when temperatures are really cool. So we can pick that fruit, keep it cool, keep it clean, get it into the winery um, before it starts breaking down. Because, you know, if you're picking Sometimes in September, we're still seeing temperatures that are 90 to 100 90, yeah. degrees. So we want to, it's a, it's, it looks like a bunch of spaceships out here in the middle of the night <laughs> when, when the harvesters are going in the middle right. of the night and there's nothing else out here. It's pretty cool. It's a fun time of year for us. Uh, everybody's excited, you know. You think about it in your career, you're probably going to only get 20 or 30 chances at, each, you know, at making wine. You know, each vintage right. is going to be different, so pretty important and I think everybody's excited this time of year. We also, um, we took some samples of some red grapes um, that we wanted to talk a little bit about and show, show you guys um, some of the different things we do. So for Grenache and as, it, as our first example, you can see this is Grenache that was planted in 1978, um, some of the oldest Grenache in the state. And what we do is we come through early spring and we actually would cut this cluster in half. Because Grenache is such a big, uh, big variety, big berries, what we're trying to do is um, concentrate that energy into the cluster and, and get some more intense flavors. We started doing this um, as a, you know, with a collaboration with some French winemaking where they were doing it, they were having clusters to try and keep these shoulder sections that are looser to avoid uh, rot later in the season. So um, they were doing it kind of for another reason, but we, we discovered that it actually works really well to help uh, to concentrate. You can see, you know, when you're making red wine, for those of you that don't know, you know, the juice comes in and it's a color so, somewhat like this. The, the red color comes from skin contact. So pumping over and skin contact is where we get that. So you can see what the color difference would be between these two wines, you know, if you were pumping these over. So another thing we'll do probably here in about a week or tomorrow is we, we would actually start taking some shoulders off of this cluster too to, to get even more concentration. So we have some different things we can do in the vineyard um, to get the style of Grenache that we want. Some of this Grenache will not be shaped and it's, uh, it's going into like a Crest Rosé program where they really want that pink color. Um, so it's a pretty versatile, versatile grape. 
and that is like you can see um, some of these clusters are more ripe, uh, ripening faster than others. So usually sometimes a little further down, like a couple more weeks, we we'll might look at doing a little uh, cl uh, color thinning, a color thinning pass through that block just to get everything, uh, so some consistency in that, in that block uh, as far as ripening. Yeah, so, so like Juan's talking about, the key is, you know, balance, balance crop load, um, you know, balance fruit crop load with your canopy and you really want to have a uniform ripening. So what Juan was talking about with green thinning, as you can see, like, uh, maybe let's grab a Merlot cluster Merlot? or a Cab cluster. Yeah. As you can see, Cab, this is Syrah this time of year and this is Cab. You can see the difference in the cluster size, but you can also see where they're at as far as ripening. Um, now what we'll do is, like Juan was saying, we call it a green pass or a color pass, but any clusters that are not up to par or are not ripening on time, um, they get removed. So that way when winemaking comes in, they, get a, they, they know what they're getting. They're getting a nice consistent fruit base. Right. Um, so we grabbed, you saw the Grenache, we grabbed the Syrah, this is a cab cluster. And here's some Merlot. And here's some Merlot. So you can see, you know, side by side. The differences. You can see side, oh, let's get out of this. Side by side, the differences in clusters and where they're at as far as ripening. Syrah, Cab, Merlot, uh, cab. cab. I think that's yeah. another Cab cluster. No, th this is a Merlot. Oh, Merlot, yeah, okay. Yeah. But that's, that's one. So I think we have a question coming in. And feel free to, to message in and with questions whenever you'd like. Um, so the first question comes from Maisha. How frequently do you test the grapes before harvest? And I think we touched on that. We're sampling these blo each block twice a week, um, typically one grower sample and then one company sample. But we're also, the closer we get to knowing uh, that when we're gonna pick those grapes, you know, we could be visiting blocks three or four times a week with winemakers because they're really trying to nail that pick date in. The numbers tell you something, but the winemakers are looking more at flavors at that, you know, once, once we get that close. Um, Anna also texted in, after the grapes are picked, what are the next steps? So do you want to talk a little bit about how we harvest? After they, they're picked? Or oh, excuse me, yeah. I guess after they're picked or how we harvest them and bring them in? Well, once we get uh, this, our schedule, uh, everybody's uh, set to, to uh, the winemaker's happy with what he's seeing, we pick them uh, with the harvesters, and then uh, we take them up to the winery, um, and they put them through the presses, uh, and uh, then they, they do all their work from there. They got a full crew out there that does all that uh, uh, pressing and all that. And yeah, so, so the big difference between reds and whites uh, reds will be brought in through, uh, directly through the crusher stemmer, um, and then they will be pressed right there. They do not ferment on skin, so they'll be fermenting as juice in a tank. Red, red fruit comes in, it goes through the crusher stemmer, the whole berry goes into a tank, um, and then we start ferment, and then you know, two or three times a day, they're pumping that juice over the fruit, getting that skin contact for tannin development, for color. Um, and so th that, that's the big difference between reds and whites. Well, to touch a little bit about the uh, uh, harvester that destems in the... Uh, uh, we, we have a harvester that the company uses at different vineyard locations uh, that um, it actually, w with the reds, it destems them out in the field. So all those stems fall out. So when we get uh, uh, the pro finished product, it's just whole berries and not so much, hardly any d uh, stems at all. And the winemakers seem to like that process. They still, uh, we, they still have a, in the winery, like Todd was touching on, that they, they, they do the, um, uh, they do put it through the, the stemmer also there. So uh, we have two different fi t types of methods we can use also. Yeah. The the machinery has really, um, you know, technology is, 
advancing so fast, we have uh, harvesters that will sort the fruit basically in the field. Mm -hmm. And then we have optical sorting once we get into the winery. So winemaking can actually set the parameters of, of the type, you know, the berry size, how big or small they'd like that, the berry color, how big or small they'd like that. And then when it comes in, it's, it's already relatively clean, but once it goes through the sorter, uh, you know, it's kicking out anything that they that doesn't meet their their standards. So, they're ending up with a very clean final product. Okay. okay. I think we have another question coming in. Um, taste it. Yeah, you, you know we taste some of these. Tops? We uh, yeah. We try some of these. Let's see what we can. So Susie, Susie uh, messaged in, which grapes do you think will ripen first? And the Sauvignon Blanc, typically, uh, you know, your whites are typically ahead of your uh, your reds, you know, so we'll be picking Sauv Blanc, Chardonnay, um, Chenin Blanc, Pinot, Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. Yeah. Um, those varietals will probably be up to a month ahead of when we would start picking, you know, some of the early reds are like uh, Syrah, Merlot. Um, usually Cab is at the tail end. Cab needs hang time. Um, so yeah, whites all, usually come in before reds. You know, there's a little overlap between red and white varieties, but for the most part, whites are first, and then reds really get going. You know, we can be picking cab up until November sometimes on cooler years. This year is, uh, you know, growing degree day wise or heat heat units, we're just above a, a long, our long term average. Um, and right now, the way things are shaping up, it looks like a pretty normal year as far as harvest dates. Um, you know, we're usually starting the first week of September, um, getting into Sal Blanc and some some Chardonnay blocks. So, um, this is looking like a, a normal year. We're coming off of, you know, 14, 15, 16, which were real early years. 15, especially, you know, hottest year on record, um, where we were we were harvesting at this this point in 2015 so that's part of the fun of it you know every right. year mother nature uh gets the final say you know and she uh she throws us curveballs this year we had a a cool wet spring last year uh you know we had a, one of the hottest april may right. june yeah. on record and then it cooled off so um, every year is a little bit different you're you know you're struggling with different things but Horse Heaven overall is a is a great place to grow. You know we have 30% more winds up here, which which helps uh, us control canopy size, berry size. Um, you know, pest and disease pressures is mitigated a lot of times because of that wind. Taste. Taste. So, um, like Todd was saying, I mentioned the wind, and usually up here it, we always have a breeze. It's hardly seldom that it's calm here. There's always a, a breeze or sometimes real windy, uh, but that helps, like Todd says, with the canopies, canopy management and, uh, you know, uh, berry size and so forth. So. Yeah, it's just an added layer of stress to the vines, you know, it keeps them, keeps canopies in check. If you can imagine these clusters, you know, on the vine, banging back and forth, uh, you know, it, it toughens up the skins, you, get a, you end up with a thicker skin, so winemaking is always talking about skin to juice ratio um, so you end up with you know they call them dusty horse heaven tannins but you know you guys have seen that the winds usually blowing up here and we have a really fine fine silty land uh, silty loam soil sandy um, so you can imagine you know when you've got 20 mile an hour winds what that dust is doing and it's it's uh, it provides a you know a, a different element to these vines so we're tasting, uh, you know, we've gone through this Grenache is probably, you know, 14 or 15 bricks. Um, it's still got a lot of really bright acid. It's got some of the more green flavors, like bell pepper, almost like a tomatoey flavor. It's not something you'd want to eat on a regular <laughs> basis. All right. Um, where's the Syrah? So you can see oh, this. Is, Syrah is pretty much 100% through Veraison, um, and it's tasting nice. It's got some softer flavors, more of like the the jammy kind of strawberry, blueberry. 
Um, but it's probably got another three weeks of hang time before the flavors that winemaking is looking for are, are really developed. Um, as you can see, like, is Merlot? It's very close to yeah. Merlot's still, you know, it's probably 90% through Verasion. It's still got quite a few green berries in there. We grabbed a few different clusters, some pink and some green. Um, this is going to be probably not worth tasting at this point. <laughs> uh, there's not a whole lot of sugar development. And come on, Ted, Todd, taste it just, just so they could see, yeah. <laughs> see your facial expression. <laughs> and then this is, uh, this is cab, you know. So another thing we're really trying to achieve in the vineyard is berry size. So you know, red varietals, we're imposing deficit irrigation um, right after fruit set. When cell division's occurring in the berries. We really want to uh, limit water and try and keep those berries as small as possible. So like I said, winemaking really wants a nice, tight, BB-sized berry because that's just more tannin um, and less juice for them and, and, it, and you end up getting more concentrated flavors. You can taste that one. You want me to taste yeah. it? Yeah. Right. Take the enamel off your teeth. I don't know. Let yeah. me check and see if there are any more questions. Okay, so we got another question. Andy uh, came in with, what time of day do you pick grapes? And I think we touched on that. Yeah, it's usually, it's usually in the evening or early, early in the morning, uh, you know, uh, because of, like Todd had mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that uh, uh, that that whatever uh, we harvest that day does we don't have it sitting out there in the hot sun all day you know for a couple hours three hours so we try to get them in try to keep with our schedule if they say they want uh, 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 load by 4 a.m. we get in here sometimes at midnight try to get those loads picked before before their scheduled time that way they go in and they, they go through the process and the presses uh, as, as quickly as possible and if we're hand picking, you know, obviously it's tough to hand pick at dark, but but we but we will, have done it. We will, yeah, we, we have done we it. We bring floodlights out if uh, if we have a high yeah. priority block or we have headlamps that uh, the crews can wear. Um, yeah, we had one cab saw uh, block that we picked at night, and we just brought in like Todd was mentioning some floodlights and uh, and everybody. I mean, it was like daylight. You know, everybody was able to see what they were doing. It just had to be careful, but. It, it's, it, had, it can be done. Yeah, that's, uh, that's another fun part of harvest is everybody's kind of on a different schedule and got different responsibilities. So, you know, the first six weeks of harvest, everybody's usually pretty energized oh, and, yeah. and, uh, and excited. And then you kind of get into that grind. And by the end of October, you know, I think people are, are ready for the next chapter. Yeah. Things kind of move into the cellar, and then you know, winemaking is doing a lot of racking and starting to get ready to bottle some of the whites. Um, I think we have another question. Anna asked, What does verasion mean? When are you talking about the grapes? Okay, so verasion is when grapes start to color, typically in red varietals and in whites, they will get. Uh, almost like a translucent color. Um, so there's kind of two periods in, in, uh, in grape development. I don't know if you can, Saw Blanc's not, let me grab another. Uh, the two periods, the first part of the season, grapes are developing um, acid. And the second, and then there's lag phase, which is basically where Things stop for a week or two in grape and berry development. That's an important time of year for us because that typically is about half of the final cluster weight. So we're trying to do a lot of yield estimation during that period. Uh, that's called lag phase. And then the second half of the season is, or you get into verasion where you're getting into color development, white varieties become almost translucent. But that is when you're uh, developing sugars. So your acids dropping and your sugars are increasing. 
that is what we were referring to as Verazon. Verazon, Verazon, you can say it any number of ways. Let's see, I think we have another question. So, Anna, oh wait, same question. <laughs> what does Verasion mean? Um, well, well, I think we've covered pretty much yeah. a, a full season. Um, it was fun to get the chance to talk to you guys. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for the, all the questions you had, and it was great. Hopefully, it's we a beautiful day a today. Them. Sun's out. It's a little breeze. Um, about 80, 80 degrees out here. So feeling great. like harvest. Yes. Getting close. Thanks. Thank you.